The transfiguration is when Jesus went up a mountain and showed three disciples his glory before his resurrection. One of the ideas behind the transfiguration is that when Elijah and Moses have these mountaintop experiences, they encounter God in a cloud. They see the pre-incarnate Jesus. Moses saw the back of God on Mount Sinai, but no one has seen the Father according to John 1.18, so it must have been the Son that Moses saw. This is a full revealing of God, unlike the partial revealings of God at Sinai, like we talked about. Even Moses, to whom God spoke face to face, did not see the full vision of, of who God is. Peter, James, and John saw it. That's what the transfiguration is here, a revealing of God. In Jesus, we see the Father. No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. He hath declared him. John 1.18 Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough to us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? If you want to see God, look at Jesus. One of the many points of the transfiguration is that it begins another phase of Jesus' ministry. His baptism was the first phase where he preached, healed, and proclaimed the kingdom of God. Here he begins to talk about his death and resurrection. It's a similar scene. The glory cloud of the Spirit is there, and the Father speaks about his beloved Son. Jesus' baptism is a show of glory that he shares with the Father. The baptism of Jesus was a glorification scene as well. In the midpoint of another gospel, John 12, Jesus speaks to the Father about glorifying his name right after he talks about his death and resurrection. The Father responds, one of the few times we see the Father speak. It's a similar scene. These ideas are also repeated in 2 Peter 1.16 when Peter reflects on the transfiguration. We call this story the transfiguration. That is, because we see Jesus changed from his veiled glory to see his unveiled, true glory. What he shares with the Father. He changed his figure, or what we could see of him. In Exodus, the cloud of God's presence is always a manifestation of God's glory. In fact, the cloud was often a veil as well. In the sacrificial system, the high priest was obscured to God by a cloud of incense. However, Jesus and the disciples are in the cloud like Moses and Yahweh. The disciples get to see God. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. Matthew 17, 2. White clothes and a shining face are ways of speaking about glory and God's presence in the Bible. Like when Moses' face was shining after spending time in God's presence. Moses reflects God's glory, but here, the glory seems to be coming from Jesus. He shares in the glory of his Father, and he's the one who will ascend up to him. We also see him in a similar state after his resurrection. This means he has the power to give us a similar form and to raise us up at the end of days. Now about eight days after these sayings, he took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered, and his clothing became dazzling white. Behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep. But when they came fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. As he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them. And they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and told no one in those days of anything that they had seen. In Luke, Moses is talking uh, to him about a departure, or in the Greek, an exodus of Jesus. The other gospels as well, God says to listen to his beloved son. These are things which tie Jesus to Moses. Jesus is a new Moses who delivers a new law, worship system, baptism, nation, way of being of the people of God, and a new covenant.